Yeah, hi everybody. Yes, Ryan here with you again today. Uh, we started a brake job and uh, kind of getting into it. I decided to go ahead and just replace all the uh, wheel seals too. Just uh, I don't want to have any trouble going down the road. So for $35, we're already in this far. Uh, just going to go ahead and change them out. I've already done the other three. We're on the last one here. So I was going to do a short video on uh, disassembling the hub, taking the seal out and uh, putting the new seal in, then putting it back together and uh, setting up your torque on your uh, spindle nuts and uh, the, the uh, end play on the uh, hub itself. So uh, first thing you have to do is uh, you get these nuts on here. You're going to take those off. I've already taken them off with the impact. It's kind of loud, so I didn't video that. But uh, they are lock nuts, so you're going to need probably need an impact to, to take them loose, most likely. I mean, it's a, well, it's a lot easier than trying to, to wrench them off or use a socket. Um, also, there's these little washers on here. Make sure you take those off before this next step I'm about to show you, or you will probably lose half of them if you do this. So just make sure you get all those off there. Sometimes you have to take a screwdriver if they're stuck and pry them off, but do that first before you do the next step and put those off to the side. Um, some of the things you're gonna need, you're gonna need a spindle nut socket, either it's probably a four inch six point or um, Possibly, if you've got the Pro Torque nuts, it's a four and three eighths with a uh, eight point. Um, like I said, that, that could vary depending on what you have, but those are probably the most common. You're gonna need a dial indicator with a magnetic base, um, a torque wrench that'll go up to 300 pounds in some cases, um, sledgehammer, then uh, just your screwdriver, a hammer, um, some pry bars. Uh, heel bar, take the seal out, and uh, 7 sixteenths for one way, that'd be later on. And uh, of course, uh, and at half inch impact, and these are these are 5 eighths, so it's 15 sixteenths socket. But this isn't just a cover for those of you that didn't know, it's actually attached to something. <laughs> and uh, sometimes they can get stuck, but I'll show you how to get it off. But we'll go ahead and pull that out. Make sure you have a drain pan underneath of it as well because you're going to lose some oil. I'm going to grab some gloves. <clears throat> that will just let that drain. So they, I buy new gaskets for my hubs and axles instead of using silicone. Because a lot of times when you put that silicone on there, when you, when you, there'll be silicone that actually goes inside of the hub and it's in there running around and it can, gets in, you know, blocks oil flow and all that. So I just use gaskets instead of that, that garbage, but that's your preference. But um, go ahead and pull the axle out. You're, we're not going to need this. Keep it clean. You know, I'll put it back here on this set of cultivators that I got. I'll set it, get this out of the way. All right, so we took the axle out here. Um, this has a Pro Torque nut, and it has a little this little orange thing. It's basically what holds the nut from backing off. So these are pretty easy to take off. Um, so you really don't even need a screwdriver. Just want to be careful not to damage it. So you just push these clips in and kind of pull them up at the same time. Then it will just walk out like that. So, and you'll notice this is orange on one side and black on the other. So these always go, when you put it back in, it even says this side facing out, but always the orange side out. So we can set that off to the side. Now this should, this will turn right out. You don't even have to put a socket on it. So just take it out. Now, if you had a preset uh, 
type of bearing setup where it's got the cone or the spacer in it, those are torqued to 300 foot pounds. So if you have that kind, you're gonna have to, it's not gonna turn out by hand. I always try to put this stuff where I can keep it clean. So put that right in my socket there. So now I'll just use a two by four and kind of get this back between here. You have to pry that seal. This one must be a little stubborn. <laughs> so you want to hold your hand in front of it because you don't want that bearing to fall out. Because it is, it's tapered like a like a cone, so it will. Once this slides, it will pop it out of there. You don't want it to fall in the dirt or something. So that's the outer bearing. Now I was just kind of inspect them, make sure it's not falling apart. You know, none of the rollers are falling out or anything. That one looks pretty good. And this has got a bunch of oil on it. So drain that out. Now again, some of these, like I said, have a preset uh, bearings or preset torque, and there'll be a cone on the spindle, or there'll be it'll come off, and it'll be um, it it usually pull out. And when you pull the hub out, and it'll be there'll be like a big sleeve laying in there, and that's an indication that um, that it's a single torque. It's a, it's a torque, and you don't have to do well. You still I always check the uh, end play on them. But that's a little different procedure than what I'm going to show you on this one. So, all right, so we got it all drained out. Okay, so we got the uh, the hub off here. Um, got it drained out for the most part. I put a piece of cardboard down to kind of catch everything. And I like this in the driveway, anyways. That if I get a little bit of oil down, it helps kill the grass and keep it out of the driveway. But uh, so. I took uh, some compressed air and kind of blew the seal area out because you want to try to keep as much dirt out of there as you can. But um, now I just use a uh, heel bar here and kind of get it in there. Once you get it start coming, just kind of Walk it around. You don't want this, you don't want to put a lot of pressure on this bearing. So if something is, if you have to force it or something, or put a lot of pressure on it, then I would, you know, try a different method. Because <laughs> you don't like I said you don't want to destroy that bearing if you're going to reuse it like we are. But these come out relatively easy. And that's the old seal. So now, then the other thing you have to be careful for on the ABS, this ring here, some of these, like my front first axle, first drive axle, it doesn't have any ABS sensors on it, but you don't want to damage these. Um, I mean, if you do damage it, you can get new ones, 
but uh, I tried to avoid it. So now let's not pull this inner bearing out. Just inspect it. And basically what you want to look for is you know any any noise or anything when you're trying to move it or any of these rollers falling out or any you know dents or damage in there on this ring or the cage and that one looks pretty good so now let's get some brake cleaner and uh, clean this all out and then we'll put the bearing back in and um, put the new seal in Okay, so we uh, took everything apart here, cleaned it up with some brake cleaner, took the, uh, the bearing out and um, checked it over, cleaned it up a little bit, and uh, put it back in there. You gotta put that back in there first. And then um, I was just like to, to run it around a couple times, make sure you ain't got any strange noises or anything. Uh, that seems good. Um, one thing I didn't show on your old seal, um, you can see that number there, that 0273, that's the part number for this. You can get an app or whatever, and cross that that's uh one of the one of the more common ones and that actually crosses to a uh a four seven six nine one if i'm reading that correct upside down that's one of the more common seals you'll see out here on like i said this has spicer axles so. But, so to put this in you don't need any special tools or anything for this type just take a little bit of oil and put it right on the edge. Then line it up. Then once you get started, then I just use a soft-faced hammer that's clean, and just real lightly, just go around it in a circle. You don't want to hit it too hard or force it, or you can damage the inside of the seal because this seal is actually two pieces, and this outside spins, or one one stationary one spins. However, you want to look at it. And that's got a little chamfered edge down there, so this will hit a bottom out, and that's where it sits. So now we're going to put a little bit of oil on this inside seal that's going to go on the spindle just just a little bit just to, to lube it so it presses on a little easier. Okay, now we're ready to put it back on. So. I'm going to go over here and clean the uh, spindle up. So this shiny spot right hip here on the uh, bigger part, I guess thicker part of the spindle here, that's uh, where that bearing is actually going to seat at. So you want to make sure that's uh, got a nice clean surface because we've already uh, lubed up the seal itself. And you also want to inspect for any you know, uh, sharp spots or chip nicks or cuts or anything like that that might uh, damage that seal. And if you do have something, you want to take some real fine uh, emery cloth sandpaper and smooth those out just a little bit. Okay, then uh, you said when you put this on, you got to go straight on with it and you got to keep it straight because if you let it fall 
on the spindle, um, it could actually damage that seal. So you want to have your bearing and everything right there, ready to go, where you can put the hub on and put the bearing in and get the nut started. That way it doesn't sag and put pressure one way or the other on that seal. So, so I'll grab that. We've got everything ready right there. I'll grab the hub and we'll put it on. And it should just slide right on. And like I said, you want to kind of hold this up. Don't let it sag. Go ahead and grab your bearing. Then uh, you kind of have to hold that. You got to be careful because the weight of that will press that bearing out. And now sometimes you can spin that nut backwards a little bit and then to get the threads lined up. Okay, and get that hand tight. And next we're gonna torque it down and I'll show you the uh, procedure for seating the bearing and the seal. And then we will we'll adjust the bearing and then we'll go ahead and lock it in. So, we'll get the torque wrench and start on that. Okay, so the procedure for this particular setup here with this Pro Torque, uh, Stemco Pro Torque, is uh, we're gonna torque it to 200 foot pounds. You wanna turn it at least one time, torque it again to 200, turn it again, torque it again to 200. So you're gonna torque it three times and in between you're gonna spin it at least one time. So I'm gonna do that. And I've got a digital torque wrench that's so set at 200 foot pounds. And uh, this one, it beeps when um, and turns red. <laughs> when it gets to 200. So we're at 200 there. And like I said, it says at least one turn, but I just turn it for a couple seconds just to be sure. Turn it the other way a little bit too. Okay, so we'll torque again. And torque one more time. Okay, now to do that, you want to back it off one full turn. And after that, spin it again. And now we're going to torque it to 100. Set my torque wrench. <laughs> and 
Okay, so we're at 100 foot-pounds now. Now we'll do the same thing like we did last time, but we'll do it three times. Okay, now with, uh, with this particular setup and this axle position, we're gonna back this off an eighth of a turn. And this is an eight point socket. So the way that you can uh, see that, these line up with the points on the socket. So we're right here. So we're just going to want to turn that point to this next stud and that'll give us an eighth of a turn. So then that will basically set the nut in your preload or in play and we'll check the end play. Okay, and now we're backed off an eighth of a turn. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, locking ring back in. And, uh, so this just goes in with this tab into this keyway on the uh, spindle here. Popped it into the groove. And that's not really. You want to make sure these teeth are all engaged. So I was having a little bit of trouble there getting it all lined up. Um, if you want to be very careful, you don't want to damage this. But then um, you want these to be, this first tab needs to be bottomed out. These are engaged. And you want to have a gap here. If this is touching for some reason, um, you need to call Stemco or whoever you got the stuff from and figure out why. Because you don't, that shouldn't be touching the bottom of that keyway. But um, everything looks good to me on that. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and check the end play on this. Yeah, so next thing we're gonna do is check the end play on this. It should be between a minimum of 1 thousandths and a maximum of 5 thousandths. So we have a dial indicator here. It's a magnetic base. And... Let me get this. Set up there. We'll go ahead and zero this dial out. Okay, so we get it zeroed out, and each one of these ticks is a thousandths on the, the big the big circle, outer outer ring there. And the only thing we're gonna do is this push and pull on it. I'm not getting any movement there. And then we're getting about a thousandths right there. It's going from zero to the first one. So 
So we're not supposed to be what we want. So, so we got rid of 1,000 and that satisfies me. So after that we can um, go ahead and put the axle shaft back in and tighten that back up. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put the axle back in. Um, I use gaskets instead of silicone. So they're, I don't know, I think I got these at Napa for like $2 or something. But like I said, you can use silicone if you want. The silicone actually comes off easier than uh, when, if you gotta scrape the gasket. But, um, you know, it came from the factory with a gasket, so that's kind of what I like to use. Okay, I'll go grab the axle and put it in. Now you're going to have to get this up in the differential carrier. It's blind. So you kind of got to pick, get a push down on it and kind of turn it at the same time to get it lined up. And just put all your washers and um, all the nuts back on and we'll take the impact and uh, tighten it back up. And, uh, usually half as tight as my half inch impact to go get some pretty tight. Um, but I'll probably still put a torque wrench on them and check them. So. But uh, that's pretty much it for changing out a wheel seal on the rear. Um, it's basically the same on the front. Um, I got it, I did my uh, driver's side hub uh, back in February and I did some videos on it but it was, <laughs> I was trying to do it myself and it didn't come out very well so I'm going to do the other side here shortly and we'll try to get that video out too soon. But um, and that, that's pretty well it with the uh, rear wheel seal or if you're going to put bearings in it's uh, kind of the same process or change out. You can buy this whole assembly, actually the preset ones where they're already all put together. It's got the seal on it. You got the bearings, races, everything. And all you do is push it on and, and torque it down um, with the, uh, the preset ones. So they're a little bit different setup than this. If I do a preset one, I'll do a, a different video on that. But um, with this, we're gonna put the other the brake shoes back on and um, pretty well done with this thing. So thanks for watching.